A tank of water is designed with ends in the shape of an isosceles triangle with a height of five meters and width at the top of 14 meters. So our tank looks like this, where the height, this length here, is five meters, and the base across the top, this length here, is equal to 14 meters. Our goal is to find the force on the end of the tank, and we're given the density of water as well as the acceleration due to gravity. So to begin, let's put this end on the coordinate plane, which would look like this. Notice how the height again is five meters, and our width is still 14 meters. To find the total force on this end, we'll be using this integral here, where the force is equal to the integral of w times d of y times l of y, integrated with respect to y from c to d, where w is the weight density, which we see below, which we see below is equal to rho times g, or density times acceleration due to gravity. D of y is the depth of the fluid at y, and L of y is the horizontal length at y. To better understand why this integral gives us our force, the approximate total force would be equal to the sum of P times A, where P is the hydrostatic pressure and A is the area. So as we sum more and more of these increments of force, it approaches the total force on the end, where A sub by the area would be equal to L of y, the horizontal length times delta y, which would give us the height, so this product is the area, and P is the pressure, where the pressure is equal to density times acceleration due to gravity times the depth, and again, L of y times delta y gives us the area. So in our previous integral, W, the weight density, remember, was rho times g. So going back to our example, we'll begin by sketching a horizontal rectangle to help us set up this integral. So let's sketch this rectangle here. Notice how the height of this rectangle is delta y, which is why we integrate with respect to y. Again, d of y is the depth at y, and therefore d of y would be this length here, and L of y is the horizontal width, which would be this length here. Let's begin by determining the weight density. So the weight density is equal to the density times the acceleration due to gravity. So in this case, we'd have a thousand kilograms per meters cubed times 9.8 meters per second squared. This gives us 9,800, and the units here would be newtons per meters cubed. Now let's find d of y and l of y. d of y would be the depth at y, which looking at our triangle here would be five minus the y value, or just five minus y. Notice when y is zero, the depth would be five meters. If y was, let's say, three, notice how the depth would be two meters. Now let's find L of y, this length here. To do this, we'll use similar triangles. Notice how we have this large isosceles triangle and this smaller isosceles triangle, where the base of the smaller isosceles triangle would be L of y. Looking at this larger sketch, let's let this width be L of y. And again, we have two similar triangles. We have this smaller isosceles triangle, and we have this larger isosceles triangle. We know the length of this base here is 14 meters. We know the total height is five meters. So if we label the height of the smaller isosceles triangle y, remember this length here would be five minus y, which we are to use for d of y. And because these triangles are similar, we'll now set up a proportion to find L of y. The height of the large isosceles triangle five is to the height of the smaller isosceles triangle y as the base of the largest isosceles triangle, 14, 
is to the base of the smaller isosceles triangle, which is L of y. Now we'll cross multiply and solve for L of y. So five times L of y must equal y times 14. So five L of y equals 14y, divide both sides by five, and we have L of y equals 14 fifths y. I do want to show a second method for determining L of y. If we consider the line containing this side of the isosceles triangle, notice how this line has a y-intercept of zero and a slope of five-sevenths. Notice how we'd go up five and right seven. So the equation of this line would be y equals five-sevenths x. And notice how this horizontal length here from the y-axis to our line would be x units. But the length from the y-axis to the left would also be x units. And therefore L of y is actually equal to two x. So if L of y equals two x, of course this is not a function of y, but if we solve this equation here for x by multiplying both sides by seven fifths, we'd have seven fifths y equals seven fifths times five sevenths x. So here notice how x equals seven fifths y. So L of y would equal two times x or two times seven fifths y, giving us the same result of fourteen fifths y. So there are a couple ways to find L of y, but now that we have L of y, we can now determine the total force on this end. The total force F is equal to the integral of the weight density, which is 9,800 times d of y, the quantity five minus y, times L of y, which is 14 fifths y, integrated with respect to y from the bottom of the tank to the top, or from zero to five along the y-axis. So let's go ahead and factor out the 9,800 as well as the 14 fifths. So we'd have the integral from zero to five of the quantity five minus y times y integrated with respect to y. Let's go ahead and finish this on the next slide. This product here comes out to 27,440. Let's go ahead and distribute. So we have five y minus y squared. Now we'll find the antiderivative. So we have five times y squared divided by two minus y to the third divided by three. So when y is five, here we'd have five halves times five squared minus five cubed divided by three. And notice when y is zero, both terms would be zero. So we have 27,440 times, this would be 125 halves minus 125 thirds. Common denominator here is six. So we have 375 six minus 256, which would be 125 six. So this gives us three million four hundred thirty thousand six. Of course we have a common factor of two. So the exact value is one million seven hundred fifteen thousand divided by three, this would be newtons. Let's also get a decimal approximation, which would be approximately five hundred seventy one thousand six hundred sixty six point six 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 seven newtons. I hope you found this helpful.